Welcome to Live Live! Woo! Maybe. Ah, there I am. Good morning. As Steve would say, Welcome to Lifeline! Oh yeah, Eli's always here. Well, as you guys can pretty much tell, my topic for today is when it rains, it pours. And I'm sure each and every one of you out here today can, can, can say that you've had those days, you've had those weeks, you've had those months where it seems like everything's just going wrong. One thing after another after another until the point where you've gotten to where you just you, you cry out and you say, what else can happen? This young lady in this song, she, she described it to a T. You know, as long as we keep our hearts and minds toward God, we'll get through it. Give me the first slide. Thank you. For me, that's all right. For me, it started a couple months ago. My trials and my tribulations seemed like one thing after another. We're heading to church, and first the van breaks down. And I get, I get heading out, and my truck breaks down. Well, I hear I'm at a church, and I can't get in because I've forgotten my keys. My wife's trying to get a hold of me because she's stuck on the side of the road. And I can't answer the phone. I can hear it ring, but I can't get in here. I finally, John shows up, and... I get in my truck and I make it over to where she's at, just barely, and we can't get the van to restart. So we wind up pushing it off the side of the road, and I climb back in my truck and I barely made it here. Later that evening, we finished up church and I tried to head home. Needless to say, I didn't make it. I wound up leaving my truck on the side of the road and hoping nobody broke in and took my stuff. Later that day, I finally got somebody to help me get it off the road and get it to where it was safe. One thing after another. And that day, it seemed like everything all at once. And, you know, and I asked myself, you know, why? You know, everything was fine just a couple of days ago. Why all of a sudden everything's going bad? And my wife and I were sitting in the middle of the room and later that evening talking about it. And, you know, I said, you know, it seems like the closer we get to God the more trials we have. For me, it's a, it's a thankful thing because the more trials I have means I'm, I'm on the right path. Because if I wasn't on the right path, Satan wouldn't be trying to pound down my door. He wouldn't be trying to make it to where I give up and say, God, what else can happen? Instead, he says to me, with my love, you can, make, you can get through. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had that problem. I'm sure out of all of you out there, there's not one of you who can say that you've not had trial after trial after trial. Just this past week, I've listened to several comments on Facebook where this person's going through this, this problem and this person's going through that problem. And my response to them is, you know, keep your eyes on the Lord. Maybe you feel that way too. But I'm reminded every day as I open my Bible and read that meant that we're in Revelations twenty one four it reads like this He will wipe away all tears from our, from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more grief, no more pain. The old things will disappear. No more death, no more pain. It means 
No more sorrow. No more wondering, will I ever get through all this? It's a promise that God made to us. Promised. Next. Okay. <laughs> We're also told to praise God even when it's hard. And as you heard me saying, all this stuff went, went wrong with me. All at once. But yet I still didn't lose faith. I still walked into the building and gave God what He deserved. And that's the hardest thing to do when you're down and when, when it seems like nothing's going right. When you've got that phone call and it says, you know, a loved one is dying of cancer and is in the hospital and, and you don't know what to do. Or when you get that phone call that a loved one is thinking of committing suicide because he's so down and out and depressed and you don't know what to do. And our Bible says in Psalms 4, 43, 5, Why am I so sad? Why am I so troubled? I will put my hope in God and once again praise Him. Praise Him, my Lord and my Savior. Placing your hopes and your faith in God. Giving Him all those burdens. Next. Next. Okay, John. I think John's having some technical difficulty up there. We came in here this morning, and we want to talk about things going wrong. We came in here this morning, and John was trying to get all this stuff together. And the screen was two, two sections wide. The lifeline cross on the top, and the article we wanted to put on the bottom. I kind of led him through what I needed, and I headed out the door. And as some of you know, we jumped in the, in the van and we headed, headed out to pick people up. And before we even got back here, Satan tried to stop us again. And the van overheated. I began to pray, God, let us get to the church at least. And as you can see, I'm here. This morning, we're trying to get things going and to get into church. And it seemed like one thing after another going wrong. Trying to keep us out of the building. And my wife said to me, she says, you know, it would be funny if we didn't get to church today because there wouldn't be any donuts. There wouldn't be any bus. There wouldn't be any message. Before John could play the music, Bam, even Elian wouldn't be here because I wouldn't pick her up. But by the grace of God, all things turned out just fine. We got here. The donuts got bought. Breakfast got cooked. The bus got run. And the screen came back to life. Like I was saying, we're, we're to give our burdens to God. Here in Matthew 11, 20, 28, it reads, Come to me, all of you who are, are tired of carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. I don't like this translation. Some of you know it is all ye who are heavy, heavy laden. I will give you rest. Because this reads like as if I'm carrying something on my back. King James Version reads like if I have all these problems and all these troubles and I can't carry them anymore. I should turn them over, turn the burdens over to God and let God handle them because He's got more power than I'll ever have. And I'm, I'm, I'm assured every day that through His love and through His grace, I'm able. We all are. We're all able to get through everyday life things. Loss of loved ones. Cancer. Sickness. Jobs. Money, homes. 
I tell you, all things are possible. But it's written. We use the word amen because it means if it is written, so be it. I know it for a fact. And I'm sure a lot of you out there do too. That if you set your sight on God, anything's possible. Next. See? Set your, keep your eyes on Jesus. Psalms 34.4 I prayed to the Lord and the Lord answered me. He freed me from all my fears. The oppressed, the, the oppressed look to him and, and are glad they will never be disappointed. Here it's telling us if we keep our eyes on Jesus, we'll never be disappointed. But even, even the oppressed, even those who are sad, ailing, can't seem to find sight in the troubles that they're in, can seek the Lord and He'll help them through it. Next. We should never stop praying. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. And I always wonder what they meant by praying without ceasing. Until one day I was walking through the Walmart store and there was an elderly lady on Lady walking through, and I mean, she was just rambling on. And as I walked alongside her, I realized she wasn't just rambling on. She had troubles, and she was praying to God all the way through the store. She was praying to God to let her find all the stuff that she needed that day and to get through all the things that she had to do throughout the day. I almost wanted to stop her and pray with her. But that's not, a, that's not a comfortable thing to do. The other day, my wife and I were in the grocery store and I was wearing a t-shirt that said Thrive on the front. Some of you know where it comes from. And this gentleman walked up to me and he said to me, Today you will thrive because God is with you. Not only does He want you to thrive, but He wants you to grow and grow and grow. And you could tell he was way out of his comfort zone. You could tell that he was having trouble even doing it because he kept telling me, I'm sorry, I know you don't know who I am, but God told me to say this to you. Even though he was having trouble doing it, he knew God would help him through it. He knew that God would give him the strength to get, up, get, get beyond his fear, get beyond... His worry and his doubt. Next. As you've heard me say, God won't forgive us. Here in the book of Romans it reads, 12.12, 12, But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. Like I was just saying, He's promised us that He'll He'll stand right beside us. But the thing we have to do, we have to call out to Him. We have to believe that in His strength. We have to know in our hearts, in our minds, that if we turn all this over to God, He'll help us through it. Next. To remember Him. And Jesus said that, that on that day, he would be with him in paradise. That thief on that cross had more problems than we'll ever begin to bear because he was hanging on that cross knowing he was going to die. But yet he still cried out to the Lord. And we need to do the same thing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, give us the strength to stand on Your Word. Give us the ability 
to reach out to you in the times of trouble. Give us the courage to know you are there always. When we're at our lowest point, Father, lift us up. Strengthen us and assure us that no matter what, You are with us. Father, today I want to ask you that you fill the hearts of each and every one here who has troubles, Father. Fill them with your love and your grace. I ask that you give them the strength and the courage to continue and to see that there are there are light, there is a light ahead. That in you all things are possible. And believe that. Give them the ability, Father, and the strength to overcome their fear so that when they leave this place, Father, they'll know You are with them always. And we ask this in the name of Jesus and give You the praise and the glory for it all. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. You play that next song, John. For those of you who are listening, if John can get this song to play, I want you to listen to the words. Because as I listen to this music, I found music. Go ahead, John.